in the previous video you already know how the JFET works and how we can get the output current which is ID drain current okay, when we control the VGS okay, VGS and also the VDD okay we get the characteristic of the JFET okay like shown in this uh, figure okay where you know that there is the IDSS and then here is VGS when the VGS change from 0 to negative 4 and then okay from this characteristic okay the transfer characteristic or transfer curve is obtained from the characteristic of JFET which means you can get this curve from the characteristic okay the curve is obtained from the location of the pinch of voltage for each level for each vgs level it means if you remember that for example for vgs equal to 0 volt here is the vp for the vgs equal to 0 and this one is another VP when VGS equal to negative 1. Mean it means that for each VGS we have it has uh, its own VP. However, we conclude that the VP overall for the transistor is the is when the VD uh, sorry the ID equal to zero. Okay, so which is VGS equal to negative 4 and at this time ID is totally 0 ID equal to 0 so actually, if you can see okay, this point can be transferred into the curve when it's joined together okay so to transfer this point to the next transfer curve we basically okay the axis for this curve is VGS in negative voltage not the VDS okay you can see here okay for the characteristic the X axis is VDS but for the transfer curve, the X axis is VGS. This is because we take this VGS value. Okay, if you can see the VGS value. So, for example, when VGS equal to 0, here VGS equal to 0, okay, at this time, the ID is equal to IDSS. See, at this point, this will be so this is the id equals to idss this is point number one point number two when vgs equal to negative one somewhere here negative one okay then this vp point is here we transpose so somewhere around here okay this is point number two for the vgs is negative two here negative 2 then this is the point for VGS negative 2 so ID somewhere here okay and continue with the VGS negative 3 and VGS negative 4 can you see this curve actually from the characteristic is same with the transfer curve so it's like we project this curve into another graph so you have to remember the axis for the transfer curve x axis is vgs in negative and characteristics is the x axis is vds okay now what information that you can get from the transfer curve okay transfer curve will tell us about the limitation of the transistor 
IDSS mean the saturation current, the maximum current that you generate from the jet So the maximum current that we can get is IDSS. Okay, we call it ID saturation current. And then in this region, the green region, the jet is actually on is working very well in this range the range is from 0 to IDSS for the ID this is for the ID okay. from 0 to IDSS and for the voltage for the VGS from 0 to VP or negative VP okay. this is the on the transistor will be on here what happened for the range outside the range value outside the range if the ID is above the IDSS value somewhere around here okay actually the transistor is not working okay it's not give the output um, exceed the IDSS value same goes with the VGS. If VGS is applied greater than negative VP here, it means that the JFET it will be off because we already exceed its range. So, when you work with the JFET, the most important parameter now is IDSS. Okay to check whether your ID is inside its range and for the voltage is VP pinch off make sure the applied VGS is not greater than the VP okay it must less than the negative VP okay because another one is uh, because we have two type of channel Either, either, either in P channel or N channel. Okay, this example is from the N channel. That's why we get negative value here. Okay, for the VGS. Okay, so it's ring this VGS and VP is in negative voltage. You can draw the transfer curve directly from the a JFET characteristic okay once we get the curve now actually the curve is transformed into mathematical equation which we call the Shockley's equation okay the curve actually is in parabolic curve so the Shockley equation is same with the parabolic curve therefore the Shockley equation represent the ID is equal with the IDSS multiply with 1 minus VGS over VP squared. And remember that the VGS value and VP are negative voltage for N channel JFET. Okay. So remember for the every time you get the transfer curve means that you will get the Shockley equation to represent the characteristic of the JFET. Now we take a look the important relationship for the JFET. First, IG is equal to zero. This is because the JFET gate source junction is reverse bias in linear operation and it has a very high resistance. Remember that why there is the uh, depletion layer in between the N-type and P-type material in JFET. When we have uh, the very, very big depletion layer, it means that reverse bias so that it prevent current 
go through from N channel into the gate. Okay, that's why IG will equal to zero. Then the ID equal to IS. Okay, as you can see from the um, diagram of the Jeff Fed, the N channel shows on top is the drain terminal where the current it flow go through directly to the S terminal. So we get this equation ID equal to IS. The third equation is the Shockley equation. Once we get the characteristic, the graph, the K, then the graph is transformed K, uh, into the transfer curve. K. So from the transfer curve, we get the Shockley equation. So it actually this uh, equation represent the, this transfer curve. Okay. We will use the Shockley equation in the next chapter. All of the chapter that use uh, Jeffett, we will use this equation to get the characteristic of the Jeffett. So, once we get the Shockley equation, now we can transpose this equation uh, to get the transfer curve like here okay so by using this table okay actually if you read carefully my original notes in a uh, powerpoint okay there is an uh, explain explanation uh, how we can get uh, transform the Shockley equation into this table okay so by using the VGS okay we substitute the VGS value from 0 into this equation and we get ID equal to IDSS when we uh, insert 0 0.3 VP in this equation then we get IDSS divided by 2 and it continues to the third uh, value here 0 0.5 VP then we get IDSS uh, divided by 4 then if VP equal to uh, VGS equal to VP, so the ID we get zero. So this uh, value is actually the point on the graph in the, uh, for the transfer curve. So I plot here from this table. So this is what I plot. Okay, we take uh, we look into detail right here. So let's say for the first one. 0 VGS and ID equal to IDSS is here when VGS equal to 0 and this is the IDSS so this is the first one first point and the second one 0 0.3 VP and IDSS divided by 2 is here this is for the point number 2 here and then point number 3 0 0.5 VP and IDSS divided uh, divide by 4 so we get here so this is the point number 3 and last VP uh, VGS equal to VP ID equal to 0 so it is here okay it means that the transfer curve now can be defined by using value of VP and IDSS okay for the transfer curve so at the end of this chapter you are able to draw the transfer curve from the given value which is VP and IDSS by using this table or you can get uh, the point here by calculate uh, each point here using this equation but no need to uh, calculate one by one because we already make the simple calculation here uh, by using this formula in this table.